Welcome back. We're here in our final segment with City Commissioner Ken Sheelan. Uh, all right, Ken, I want to ask you, what do you think the role of, of a city municipality should be in social services? Obviously, the state and federal government get involved, but I mean, things mm -hmm. like drug treatment programs or, or homeless shelters mm -hmm. or things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think it's very awkward. We don't have the resources to be engaged, nor do we have the knowledge or skills that we really need for social services. And I think there are a wide variety of needs in the community. You know, we have First Step, which deals with addiction problems, and we have uh, the Salvation Army, which deals with homeless problems. Each of them seems to have a slightly different focus, and I think it'd be very difficult for us to to manage the resources, the kinds of the wide variety of resources that we need uh, for social services. But I think we do need to play a coordinative kind of role. And I think that's particularly uh, important now downtown because we do have a problem uh, with uh, homeless people, or at least a perception of a problem downtown, both in the library at Five Points Park and on Main Street. You know, we had a, uh, we had a mugging on Main Street a couple of weeks ago, and it kind of put the spotlight on the issue. Right. So I think we need to uh, come together with these social service agencies and, and try and, and help them be effective and deal with the problems that the public sees that we have downtown so that everybody's happy with the result. Let's talk a little bit about baseball. Obviously, that's been in the news a mm -hmm. lot, both first with the Reds, then the Red Sox, then the Orioles. Where do you come out just in general philosophically on the city spending money to have a spring training team? Well, you know, the, the major part of the funding for a baseball team would come from the tourist development tax, which is not a city tax. Right. It's a county tax. And the state law that enables the tourist development tax specifically says that it can be used for a stadium. So the question is, is the county commission willing to um, um, allocate some money from the tourist development tax to to a baseball stadium but for me from a, a city perspective it's got to be a fair deal for the taxpayer whether it's a city taxpayer or a county taxpayer there are city resources assets that would be used uh, with a baseball team but my real problem with this whole thing aside from the high cost that the Red Sox were asking for and even the Orioles is the lack of leadership from the City Commission there has never been a vote on either the Red Sox or the Orioles at the City Commission table on what our position would be, what we were being, what we were willing to offer to a baseball team. In fact, I'm on the Tourist Development Council, and when I was asked at the Tourist Development Council meeting one day what was the city willing to offer to get a baseball team in the city, I couldn't answer the question. I said, well, we'll have to get back to you because we've never taken a vote on that. I'm not sure that the issue is absolutely dead yet. I'm really convinced that the Orioles want to be here. And I think that there are some hints that, mainly because they haven't signed yet with anybody, that they might be willing to come back and talk to us. And there have, has been some effort at the county level to try and uh, trim the costs. And, and the latest uh, estimates I've heard about are that it would be somewhere between 40 and 45 million. I'd like to see it come down even less, lower than that, particularly since people keep comparing us to the to Charlotte County in the race. So, but I think there's still a chance. Um, the last thing I'm going to ask you about is uh, is some of the newspaper endorsements and stuff like that. Uh, particularly, the the Herald Tribune endorsement says said today uh, in the editorial page that. We have to have uh, our, our next uh, city commissioners be a consensus builder. And I, I never really liked that term myself. I always thought political leaders should be more about conviction than consensus. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. How, what do you think about that? Well, I, I've always said that politics is not a team sport. And I've always characterized myself, in spite of the fact that the Herald Tribune calls me temperamental, uh, I've always characterized myself as a feisty little Irishman with an independent streak who says what he thinks and does what he says. And that's the way politics should be. Right. The voters should know where you stand, and you should be able to take a stand. And not just worry about making everybody Singing happy. kumbaya. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ken. Thanks a lot. You're a great guest. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. All right. Ron.
Now, of course, it's time for the Weasel of the Week. Okay, now, people have said in the past that I never make my friends. There are people that I like, the Weasel of the Week, that I always pick on people I don't like. And, of course, this is not true, and I'm going to prove it tonight. Tonight, our Weasel of the Week is the publisher of The Observer, Matt Walsh. Matt, I'm sorry, you've been a former guest on the show, great guy, but uh, your, uh, your uh, comments or columns in the city commissioner race has been somewhat strange. First, two weeks ago, The Observer came out and endorsed Ken Sheelan and said he gets it, he's the only one qualified, he truly understands the issues, went on and on and on and basically only really talked about Ken. In passing, mentioned Susan Atwell, if you have to vote for somebody else, you can vote for her. And then something strange happened, and we're not quite sure why, but The Observer this week reversed their position and said, we changed our mind, we're going for Paul Caragiulio. Well, we had our cameras in Matt Walsh's bedroom the morning after he endorsed Ken Sheelan, and we found out what really happened. Let's roll the tape. 